aftershocks were the clue that we needed to follow up to figure out how earthquakes interacted. And his team had a great opportunity. Instruments around the state captured landers and the aftershocks that followed in extraordinary detail. The scientists knew how deep the rupture went, where the fault had broken, and precisely how far it had slipped. They had numbers for everything. Data is king in earthquake science. It trumps theory, it trumps everything. When we have great data, we really can develop a deep understanding. Nothing exceeded or met the quality of data we had for landers. Never before had there been so much information about two earthquakes, so they set about looking for any connection between Landers and Big Bear. They had been working on a computer model that they hoped would illustrate how one earthquake could trigger another. The idea behind it was remarkably simple. As an earthquake strikes and the fault lines pull apart, the system releases a huge amount of pent-up stress. Move it! Come on! Their theory was that as the earthquake releases this stress, it is redistributed to areas close by, seen here in red. These are the likely areas where the next earthquake should take place. The trick was to find out where these red zones might be. To do this, they began to feed the data into their computer. The model had to take into account hundreds of calculations about how much the fault had slipped, how deep underground the rupture had occurred, and the elasticity of the Earth's crust. So the way we set this software up was to give us a visual sense in which areas were more likely to produce earthquakes and were more hazardous were turning red and areas that were farther from failure were blue. Finally, the model showed where the stress from landers had been transferred. The area to the west lit up in red. We were hunting for the possibility that Big Bear occurred in a region, one of these red lobes, where the stress was jacked up by the occurrence of the landers earthquake. And sure enough, Slap bang in the middle of the red zone sat the Big Bear Earthquake. Having Big Bear land in the middle of our red blob was very exciting. But that in itself doesn't clinch the case. Because Big Bear could have landed there by accident, and that's always a possibility. And so what we were to depend on were not just that one earthquake, regardless of its size, but the three or 4,000 other aftershocks that occurred in the first few weeks. Were those also occurring in the red zones? Once again, they returned to their model. They set about plotting every single aftershock that rippled out from the lander's quake. And just like Big Bear, most fell in the red zone. <laughs> 